pleased to have you as a guest on Like It Is. Thank you. How did it all start? Had music always been a part of your life from when you were a little boy? Yeah, you know, growing up musical family, grandfather, mother, uncle, sister, pit, and everything. <laughs> <laughs> what part of Jamaica? Um, St. Anne's, you know. Yeah? That's in the country. What town? Uh, a town called Rodnall. It's not well known, you know. It's a, a little place up in the hills, you know. Yeah. Um, how big is your family? Well, my family is really big family, you know. Malcolm, the family name is Malcolm. There's plenty. That's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> when did you begin to get involved in music, really? About 19... About 19... Call about 1958. Doing what? Well, I was always interested in music, but that time I was learning trade, you know, and meet up some guys who can sing. One named Desmond Decker. And so we started out from kind of rehearse together and thing, you know. And then one day we went away, do some recording. Then I fell after. Mm -hmm. You weren't doing the same kind of things then that you're doing now. What kind of music was it in the beginning? Uh, that music was ska. Ska? Ska music, yeah. yeah. Well, how does ska differ from, from reggae? Ska is different, different in sound, different in style, different playing, you know. Mm -hmm. Ska is a more quicker music mm -hmm. than reggae. No relation? Yeah, it's almost the same music breakdown for go much slower, you know. Uh -huh. Same route? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's almost the same music, Ska. But only say so now, if it was playing at, um, at 33, it started playing at seven and a half, you know. I hear it more. That's a good analogy. Uh, how, how does reggae and ska come out of Calypso? Many people ask that. Yeah, because the Calypso was always there first. Right. You know? And then now, uh, when the musicians in Jamaica started to play, a lot of them can play Calypso too, because they play a lot of Calypso. Mm -hmm. But because uh, the American influence music come past you down there, you know? them start to kind of get more to them time you saw Fats Domino. Yes. And plenty of them type of people. So after a while now the music start drift from the reggae. So it used to be a, a music almost like a like a half blues. It used to play before mm. the sketch start, you know. Even people like Joe Hicks Cha na na cha na 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 cha na na cha na na na. You know that music. Right. Music play that plenty. Uh -huh. So um, from there now it develop to people start ching 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 for ska, you know, uh -huh. and then for um, rock steady like ching 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 for reggae now it's check it check it check, you know. So you have three different feel. But the three of them can put together again and make one thing still. Now, Calypso music, most of it, dealt with family and folk stories and love and beautiful island in the sun, things still. like that. How did it move into what we're getting in the music now where we have message? Because during that time of this um, Calypso and... Um, Thing. People never wasn't so conscious about Africa and where them roots come from. Mm. Since the reggae come now, people get, I mean, not from a point of music, because music is always conscious. But since the reggae come now, the reggae start talk about Africa, blackness, you know, in a militant way. So that is how it kind of, that is how the lyrics differ from the whole island in the sun. Well, who are some of your influences? Well, I think my biggest influence is Marcus Garvey, I was last year. Yeah. Sure. From uh, what you heard coming up as a boy about Garvey, or what you've learned now that you're grown, or what? Um, or what you hear, what you read, you know, and what you, what you know, know about him. Did you learn much about Garvey in school? In no, no. no. You see them don't teach 
It's the education that we don't get in school, you know. We don't get that type of education that when we grow up we can know who we is. Mm -hmm. We get a more education that we might know who Christopher Columbus is, or who Marco Polo is, you know. But we never really know who Marcus Garvey is, who Elias Lassie is, or who any black man is. Were you born as a Rasta? How did that evolve? Well, where I figure you now, I was born, you know, and then born and uh, growing. There was a certain amount of consciousness in you know, I self that, you know, it was always a lonely world, not finding people who might think like me, you know. Yeah. Not, 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 not to say that I think so different, but because and this consciousness about God and the people we come from is more Christian, you know. We always try to do, like, try to stand up not the right. But what we used to find out now that one church quarreling against the next church, and I figure I never want any of that, you know. I never want to really entertain anything where this one will fight against that one and everybody talking about God still. So after going on and going on and coming up, you know, the, the, the thing that was there, get more stronger, come to Kingston, meet some more people, them people is Rasta. You talk to them and find out it's the same thing I have inside. It's the same thing. How old were you, you when this started to happen? This is about 17, 18, you know. Uh. I find out that the same thing where I deal with, the same thing where the Rasta man talk about. So that is how I could identify myself as a Rasta by no. not changing, you know. Now, what happened when you went back home and told your, your family what you had found? Oh, I never have a home to go back to. No? No. Where we from, everybody gone, you know. Uh-huh. Everybody gone. Everybody living in America, some living in Kingston, everybody gone, so. Never really have a home not that much, although we used to have a home before grandfather died, you know. But after grandfather died, everything gets crashed. So, I know so you came to Kingston, and that's where it began to happen. Yeah. Where did you live in Kingston? What part? Um, east, I call it East Kingston. Mm -hmm. Out near the east, yeah. and then we we'll go up, up a place named Oxford Street, you know, down to Spanish Town Road, down to Trent, then up to Trench Town. Yes. So, for a long time, things were kind of lean. Well, yes, things was kind of lean as can. It leaves to what is your expectation and your do, you know? To me, it was, it was lean, but I could understand it, because coming from a country where you learn to do things like, you don't learn to depend on family and all of that, you know? You go out and you plant your own corn, and you watch the corn grow. When corn grow, you pick your own corn, you know what I mean? Yes. All of them fruits from them tree, you can get them, you know? So... It's a little different, though, in town. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to do different things to eat, eh? <laughs> well, when you're in a city, it's a whole different ball game, you know? Right. People have to go to work, catch the bus. You know, the country all the day, you go for the donkey, and you ride the donkey to the farm, and you're cool, you know? Right. In other city, people also catch the bus, go to work, get off of work, come back home, <laughs> you know? So there was a different thing up there. I know a little bit about Jamaica, and I understand in Kingston, Trenchtown is a rough part of town. How did you survive? Well, while living in Trenchtown, you know, um, as a young man, surviving was easy. The only thing you'd have to really look out for was the police, you know? God, the police could have just get you frame you, you go to prison, and because you come from Trenchtown, you know, Trenchtown's up. From them say, where you from? It's a Trenchtown. You're gone. You know what I mean? <laughs> you get shipped out. You know, a lot of people are confused about what a Rasta really is and have a very negative image of the Rasta. Tell us what a Rasta is. See, Christ promised that he will return within 2,000 years, you know, mm. and he said, when he come, it will be the king of kings, the lord of lords, the conqueror and the lion of Judah, through the lineage of King Solomon and King David. Now, my life, 
have great meaning to me. So I really search to find out if God is here. When I search, I look, I look in Ethiopia. I look all about, look in Germany, you know, because I'm not prejudiced. Me look for God. I look in Ethiopia, I see one man stand up with these names, Emperor Ali I see last day. Name King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Conquering Lion of Judah, through the lineage of King Solomon and King David, written in the Bible. Uh, one of my thing is that um, the Bible, let me say that King James edit the Bible. Now, my understanding is that if King James edited the Bible, I don't think he would edit it for the benefit of black people. So when the revelation turned out that Isla Selassie is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, coming straight through the lineage of King Solomon and King David, then, you know, we really know that this is a Christ return because we know in this world, yeah, when the white man, when the white man edited it, he wouldn't edit it in our behalf, you know. He would have more edited to make it look like England going to be the, the big, big thing. But in the last days, they'll prove out that is the is Ethiopia, Isla Selassie, you know. And Isla Selassie's name is Rasta. So we are called Rasta, you know, called by his name. Uh -huh. And then, it's a lot of things. We go as far as saying, he said, when I return and you call upon him, now this is God. He said, when I return and you call upon him, your mother and your father will forsake you. Now, we know that if you call upon the Catholics, you, you, they embrace you. You call upon the Church of God, they embrace you. Any religion you call upon, you might get embraced. The only religion they push you off from is, is Rasta. But that does make the truth more, more real because he said, when you call upon my name, your mother and your father will forsake you. And that is why today you hear Rasta get so much bad name. It's not because Rasta do anything bad, but it's because all the prophecy go with it. When you, if, if your mother and your father will forsake you, just imagine people who don't even know you. You know what I mean? Well, in most religions, uh, you go to church on Sunday, and you may go to a Bible class once or twice during the week, True. and that's it. Yeah. Is it pretty much basically the same in Rasta, or is it more involved? No, we say no. We say that the man is the church. Uh, the Bible is there. But what we find out now is that a lot of people read the Bible, but they don't understand the Bible because the approach to the Bible is wrong. I mean, there's no way you can read a book. You just take up a book and just read it in the middle and figure you can find out what was happening from the beginning to the middle. The, the, the Bible is a whole book with a, with a whole tradition in it. And from them read to Genesis to Revelation, the whole truth of the whole straight road with the overstanding is there. You know? So it's not a several then we just go um, go church and do like the other Christian. We know that the man is a church. You know? Because see, you just can't overthrow the truth. You know? We, our people, have our roots. When we search for it, we find it in a rasta. Because it, we don't see there's no other way. We don't see no other way. It's rasta we find the roots, you know, you know. How do you handle fame? I handle fame by not being famous. Come on, you know you're a famous man. No, I mean, you know. Not to me. No? No famous to me. <laughs> Some people would, get drunk off of fame. See, I learned, I learned from, from <coughs> he was coming in, from I just started music. You know, the people them warned me. Them show me say, hey, this game is a game where if you don't mind sharp, you lose your consciousness. So the only way you can lose your consciousness is because if you figure say you're getting, some people say, Ray, you might, your head might get swell. Right. And if your head swell, that's it. So, you know, really don't keep my head in a bandage that it can't swell. <laughs> <laughs> True. How do you handle the women that come at you in droves? I, people have visions of women beating down the door to get at Bob Jeez. Marley and grabbing <laughs> clothes. <laughs> Is it like that? No. No? 
né? Humanize, né? Is it difficult, though, to keep your balance and not, you know, get to feeling that you're more important than you really are when so many people are after you all the time for different things? No, you see, I don't think, I, I never really check myself, you know, I really, I know I am benefit to the people, you know, that's the only consciousness I have of myself, that I can be beneficial to a people, you know, and you know, really, you don't know anything else. I don't know that. What do you think it is that has made Bob Marley such a big name? I think, you know, I maybe it's just what Bob Marley stand for. What is that? The truth. And the determination to stay alive and survive. You know? You have a record out called Survival. Yeah. That was last year. Yeah. Was anything, did anything happen to you that caused you to write that? Well, 1976, I'm shoot off of me, right? Yes. And I figured that was survival, you know? Yeah. What happened when you were shot? You were in your home. Yeah. Was it in the morning or at night or what happened? Well, it was about, um, well, that's about 9 o'clock in the night. Yeah. What happened is that um, the night before, about three nights before that, I, I was living at a place called Pool B, you know? Mm. And I went home about three o'clock in the morning and get, a, and get some sleep. And then I vision I was in a lot of gunshot, you know? That was, that was a, a dream. I was in a, a, a barrage, a gunshot, and... But when, when, when it all over, you know, it's like me never really get no shot. But me see my mother get shot. You know, the vision show my mother get shot in her head. And what happened is that the vision said, don't run. You know, it's like, do you know that this gunshot is like something that the vision said, don't run, stand up. So when the gunshot started firing on Hope Road, the first thing come back to my mind was the vision. And all I could remember is that the vision said, don't run. And so me have to stand up, you know. And, you know, them fire fire until was tired of fire and then two is, is, is not really a laughable gun battle. Man starts to run and it ease up, you know. And that Where was, were you hit? Eh? Where were you hit? Me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Went right through? Or just skin? No, I'm said large inside there. Eh? Yeah? Yeah. You never saw the gunman? Well, at that time, no. But you know who did it? Yeah, I know that. Were they caught? No, but I don't caught the police. Mm. It's just, you know, what I'm saying. You have a record company now? Yeah. Why? Oh, you know, a long time we always have a record company. What we have now is a record in studio. When we go into the studio to work, it was a lot of hassle. I mean, we're a raster, you know? Some people don't want to raster in them studio. No, if you stop all of this, you have to make one, because, you know what I mean? A man might say, don't you say, I'll still ask your God. Well, you know what I mean? Go and build your own studio, you know what I mean? So, all right, I'll still ask his God, I'm going to build a studio, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I just said, go. Just, is it them things come through sabotage and through pressure. If everything was nice, maybe we wouldn't have to be in a studio. But, you know, it, it's just a tricky place. It's not everyone really have that humanitarian feeling. Some people just have deal with, them don't even know what they're dealing with. Mm. What's ahead for Bob Marley, do you know? Do you have an agenda or a master plan? Well, I feel ahead for I and I is the unity of Africa. And then when the unity of Africa come, then people will really understand, say, you know, there was something in this thing. Or there is something in it. Do you think of yourself more as an African than a Jamaican? Yeah. Because one of the main things is that we are Rasta. From you accept Rasta, you become a Ethiopian, which is Africa. 
Next thing again, the history of Jamaica shows that the Arawak Indian was living there and it belonged to the Arawak Indian. Now, our history shows that through slave business, black people come out of the West and thing, you know? So we still figure, say, Africa is a root, you know? And this is where we must return to. What do you see as most of uh, Africa's problems as far as uniting, I mean? I see Africa problem is that outside people keep on fatiguing the people, you know, and make them can't really get them things together, you know. If it's not this superpower, it's that superpower. But Africa is only a place which part of the music's plight, you know. Nobody not really. Africa, Africa so rich that it, it become a man just going to Africa, steal out where he wants to steal and carry back in a theme country. And Africa stayed alike, you know. Go Africa ready. Af uh, Garvey used to say Africa for the Africans. Is that how you feel? Yeah, Africa for Africans, a woman abroad, you know. True. <laughs> will, your, will your home base, though, always be Jamaica? Or someday do you, would, no, would you like to live in Africa? No, someday going to be in Africa. Yeah. Maybe we open a Jerusalem. You know what I mean? Then in Bible land. And what do you think lies ahead for Jamaica? I think what lies ahead for Jamaica is that Jamaica is a beautiful island. The best thing Jamaica could have been is just like how Jamaica, like how England owned Jamaica. Jamaica must make some part of Africa own Jamaica. You know what I mean? And it worked more nicer. I mean, you know. But if, if it's going to be a thing which probably we always have a, going to have a war, because the only solution is either them get themselves with Nigeria or with someone, you know what I mean? But make Jamaica become some African, something to do with Africa, that Africa who in Jamaica, you know? But because the people and them will a whole heap ideology and philosophy where they want to come with, you know, some people want to be Marxist, some want to be this, some want to be that. And nobody would own, and plenty of people don't want to be with them is. And where them is is Africa. And, and Africa have its own culture and its own people. And you know, all it needs is people who keep it down for you to die out of the earth or something. What is your uh, feeling about the condition of black people here in the United States? I feel like black people should develop themselves, you know, not, in, not, not to several then just developing up yourself having a prejudice thing to it. It's just that we are people with our own history and culture, we can educate ourselves. I mean, we are the first creators, so we have to really, everything we see on this earth here, yeah, the black man make it. And, I, and I'm saying that the white man don't make some, but all wisdom come from the black man. You know, a lot of young viewers look up to you and are going to want to hang on every word and every syllable. Do you have a message for young people? Well, you know, the whole thing again is to really check out the truth of Rasta and don't make, like, fallism. Don't make it check it out. And don't get too busy that you can't check out the truth because the truth is there. And Africa awaits its creators. And we know that the people in the West, Ed Wise, is them ready, you know? They have to learn, come learn. What them learn in the West, they have to carry it home to them people, make it be a benefit to the people. Because, I mean, how long must the black people suffer? And these are people, you know? And then we have our own culture, we have everything. We don't shout at anything. We have everything. Plus, we have a land that no one is living there. And we must go home to it. And when you go home, you can build all of these big buildings if you want. I mean, if you miss a city, build a city. You know what I mean? If you want a car, you can get a car. I mean, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see the big thing. One time, America was, was you know what I mean? Maybe used to have lots of all, all, all where I call it, all sort of, thing I walk through. Africa is a peaceful place. Then we want to fool black people, but it's a jungle and blah, blah, boom, boom. 
Where have you been in Africa besides Ethiopia? Zimbabwe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Gabon. How did Zimbabwe strike you? Well, you know, Zimbabwe nice, man. Zimbabwe really nice. I mean, you know, it's like a paradise in a, in a, in a, in a, in a place. You know, when you go in and see it, beautiful. How did the people react to you? People's great. Yeah. People good. You know, them places, when you go and you see how the people, how the land set up, you see people living. You see a man having most on a nice pizza. And then the whole thing about it, the climate, you can go out all the while. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The climate nice outside. Yeah. If you want to look upon a few lions and things, you can walk and go. And if you want to see some things that man never make, but it look like somebody make it. That's all Zimbabwe too. Because I go in a place and I see some stone farm. But I know it's not the man make it, but the weed farm, you know, is, is higher, than, higher than something. It's really been a pleasant and informative experience talking to you, Brother Marley. Nice. I thank you for your time. I agree. Wish you well. That's that.